Hi, I'm Shaka Hislop and you're here at Exozyme TV. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Extra Time TV. This is Andre Soklal and I'm joined once again by James Baird. Trinidad Tobago just came off a 6-1 victory over Montserrat. Everybody is excited. And uh, we were supposed to play the winner of the Cuba versus French Guyana game. But unfortunately, uh, Cuba basically, uh, I don't want to say forfeit the game, but uh, they did not play the game. And as a result, we'll be playing French Guyana. So James, uh, you know, before we get into the details of the game, I just wanted to touch on uh, this particular issue with uh, Cuba. You know, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think there's politics at play somewhere because to me, from what I read in the research and the, the friends that I have that are on the Cuban side, uh, they had been training for a while. I think they were in Nicaragua or one of those countries for a month preparing and then obviously as they were trying to get to America to play the game, there's no visas and things like this. So it's disappointing because I think they had a very bright team because quite a few players play in Europe. Um, I think O'Neill Hernandez is one of them. Um, obviously, they're not getting to play, so it's sad. I mean, all those players would have been looking forward to this. They would have taken time out of their club careers to get ready for it. So it's disappointing, but um, I, I, we don't know enough about it. That's a sad reality. I mean, it gives French Guiana, uh, I don't want to say a free pass to this game, but, um, and it's interesting because I was looking forward to seeing the two teams face off to see what Trinidad were going to play. Now we're going into a game that we don't really know what French Guiana have, had, you know, have. I mean, I know they were in, the, I think, the 2007 was it, um, Gold Cup or one of the Gold Cups, you know, relatively recently, I can't remember, but um, I don't know too much about them. So it's a very interesting turn of events, let's say, but. Um, I suppose we'll probably hear more as time goes on, but it's disappointing. Yep, and you know, uh, it, it, it was it is, and I'll just read something before we head into the game. Uh, one of the quotes I got uh, from CONCACAF. CONCACAF has been in regular communication with the Cuban Football Association regarding their travel to the 2021 CONCACAF Gold Cup preliminary round qualifiers. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19 related travel and visa challenges and the required COVID-19 COVID testing regime, their match tonight against French Guyana will not take place. Um, the health of the players is a priority, according to the, the statement. Given the current public health situation and the ongoing need for protocols to be adhered to, the health and safety of participating teams cannot be compromised. So, you know, that was the statement, you know, we got straight from CONCACAF. So, um, it is what it is. Now we play, you know, French Guyana. Yeah, so uh, James, you know, we, we came up from a 6-1 victory from Montserrat, you know, everybody's buzzing. We did our reaction, folks, you can check that out with James and uh, Andre Samuel. So let's talk about this game, James. We're heading into this game. How does Trinidad approach this game, James? Well, the first thing I want to say just before we go into that is um, I find it interesting CONCACAF's statement and then what, I, what you're reading in the, the media from Cuba is very different. But as I say, that's another story, but I just wanted to put that in there, first of all. You know, ah, conspiracies. They, they do vary. But anyway, we're talking about Trinidad now. Um, I don't know what to expect because we know, obviously, Trinidad have the potential injury doubts. I think um, so Aubrey David obviously got the, the facial injury, which um, obviously was horrific. Um, we don't know if he's going to play this. I think I actually watched the press conference with Angus Eve and he said give him as much time as possible to try and make it, obviously. And I think the other one was Tristan Hodge. So two players that started the game, obviously. Um, but we do have cover in there. To me, I mean, we, we spoke about it at the time that we did the, um, the preview. They have a lot of fullback cover. They have you know, a few centre-backs covers. So they should be able to handle it. And I think we handled ourselves very well in the Montserrat game. I think... Um, we, we very very comfortably put them to bed. I think there was a lot of mistakes by their opposition goalkeeper, but I think we took our goals well, we did well. And this will be a different challenge for us because, as I say, we don't know too much about um, French Guiana. I think they have, a f they have a few players playing in Europe. I think Sloan Privet, um, Kevin Romani, um, Simon Lugier, among few. I mean, some of these guys have played in the, they're, they're kind of veterans of the, the French game, but they're not obviously playing top, top tier. But it's interesting because I don't know what we're going to expect. I would imagine they'll mix that blend with some local talent. But um, it will be very much a... I don't want to say anybody's game because I think definitely Trinidad has to be favourites. 
but you just you don't know they could they could come up and surprise us and you know we've been we've seen complacency before this is not something that's new to Trinidad and Tobago I mean everybody's talking about the uh the Bahamas game but uh, this game in particular is one where we have shown in the past where we get a result, we get carried away, everybody gets carried away and start jumping ahead. And then we see what happens. We, we sometimes fall on our faces. Uh, I don't think Angus Eve is the kind of guy who would allow that to happen. Um, it's really down to the players. I mean, there's only so much the coach can do. But, you know, uh, as we predicted, Angus went with the 4-2-3-1 formation that he loves. That's, that's a formation that he's very comfortable with. Uh, you know, locking things down at the back and eventually it gave the forward some tranquility and we saw the result. So do you think there will be much changes outside the absence of Hodge and, um, and Aubrey David tactically in terms of the formations? Well, I think definitely players st stake their place for a game, you know, in a sense. I thought Rion Moore came on and took his two goals very well. Um, will Angus change it from the start? I doubt very much. I think he will go with, you know, low blow up top again because as I say, especially the fact that we don't know too much about them. You know, although it would have been a, if there, if there was a game that was, I don't want to say easier, but a, a lesser opponent, which we, which we know about, he could have made those changes. But I think because of that, he will um, keep very similar, I mean, a very similar team. But I think one thing he has to be a little careful of is I think they will be a little pacier. They will be a little bit more disciplined. I think um, they have a coach from France, if I'm not mistaken. So they and they've probably done their homework. They would have watched our game against Montserrat. They will have a plan, you know. And um, I think, as I say, we just have to be cautious because, as I say, we don't know too much about them. And as I say, the fact that they did make the Gold Cup, as I say, not too long ago in a sense, um, says that they do have something about them. And obviously, they have the French link. Um, so we will see. But I think that we will go with a very similar squad. Angus will be hoping that he can get, you know one or two goals early on so we can get, get these guys you know more experienced the guys like Leon Moore and other guys so um, it will be an interesting as I say the first 20-25 minutes will be key in this game we will have to lock it up and I think that's why obviously Hackshaw and um, Kaleem Highland were preferred in those that two sitting rule you know the only thing is as I say I find Hackshaw was a bit aggressive at times he got the yellow card and to me he got cautioned you know several times after that you know so he has to be a little careful and also I'm not sure if he gets a second yellow in this game if he would miss, obviously, the Gold Cup games that are coming up because you do have to think about it as a coach, you know, what's next? If, we're, if we you know, go one or two goals up, we have to then plan because I think the Gold Cup's next week as well, you know, if it, if it all goes well. So there's a lot of things that Angus Eve has to consider, but I think we're on the right path and I think, um, I think, I think we have the quality to do it. Yes, and you know, before we move along with some more discussions, if we win this game, folks, we head into Group A of the, uh, the CONCACAF Gold Cup with uh, Mexico, El Salvador, and Curacao. Very difficult teams. That's a discussion for another time. Let's take one game at a time, James. One game at a time. So, you know, uh, one thing I did notice, everybody's getting carried away and excited. But of course, you know, we, as a fan, I mean, we'd love to be excited. But there were little things that I noticed that's still there that Angus has to be wary of with stronger teams. For example, when we conceded that, that goal, Yes, we responded quickly. Yes, we got a goal, but it, it shows a recurring problem with Trinidad Tobago football at all levels. That concentration level where we start getting kind of cocky and we start cruising. That intensity that we need for the 90 minutes. Very much like, you know, I, I'm going to make a comparison to the Euros like Roberto Mancini, Mancini and is it Italy. Um, I think, you know, while the team has hardly really trained together and played much, that is something against teams with better uh, strikers and more clinical players could hoot us. You know, when we played in the last set of qualifiers before under Dennis Lawrence, Stephen Hart and so on, that has always been our undoing. We played well for about maybe about 60 something minutes and then we always have this dip which we pay for with the bigger teams. In this particular case, Montserrat, you know, basically was not, the, uh, no disrespect to Montserrat, but the opposition was not of that quality of a Mexico or a Costa Rica or a USA. So, you know, we were able to, you know, in, as, instill uh, an element of uh, confidence and, and bounce back. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing Angus is probably looking at this. Uh, from what I know, he's the kind of guy who's very meticulous. Um, I'm not saying any other coach isn't, but I mean, to me, that was a very glaring thing that they have to pay attention to. The players were clearly fired up, as you saw, James. You know, I mean, maybe too much so, but I mean, considering 
all the nonsense going on in the camp. I guess that's a good sign, I guess. But, um, you know, tactically, I think Angus, we know exactly how he's going to lay his team out. But I think uh, those little details, I could walk it undo us in this particular game. Because uh, we have, as I said before, a tendency to underestimate teams or get very cocky very quickly. The game is not won until the final whistle is blown. People are already talking about the Gold Cup. I think that's a mistake. I don't think that's what Angus is doing. But I think the press needs to kind of dial it back sometimes because I've been seeing articles about, uh, you know, the Renaissance and things like that. It's one game. One game. I know everybody talks about a game against the Bahamas that we drew. And sometimes that says a loss because it feels like a loss. But I think we really have to sit down and think because the Gold Cup is next week. And I think people will be expecting us to be beating uh, French Guyana 6-0. And when we go into the group stages, they'll be shocked. And I think people need to curb their expectations and, and understand that while it was a great result, there's a lot of work to be done. So, you know, in my, my eyes, I think it should be a victory for Trinidad and Tobago. I, from what I know of Angus, I don't think complacency will be allowed to set in. But that's an issue that many other coaches have tried to deal with and, you know, it has undone good results in the past. So, you know, uh, based on the injuries and so on, uh, who do you think will be the key player for us in this game? Well, I think, um, as I say, I'd be curious to see if Aubrey David plays because I thought he was a real warrior to, you know, um, play through it. I mean, um, I think this game, Nicholas Frederick would may have a few more saves to make in this Red game, I mind. think. I mean, um, I think we could get a lot more out of Alvin Jones. I think we didn't, didn't give, to me, give, you know, what was seen in the past. I think um, we need a little bit more going forward from him in this game. But I think, obviously... Kaleem Highland will be key because he's a skipper, you know, he's the one that pulls things together. I think Lobo will be very much key for us because I think this is a game that we need to get a goal. We need to get a goal probably early and settle the nerves and then take the game to them, you know? Because as I say, we just don't know. And I think obviously Molino had a decent game in the last game, so we'll be hoping to see a little bit more from him this game. But um, it's one of those things because we don't know really, I mean, I know I was reading uh, Thierry Deneuf, who's the coach of Hinchgana, he's definitely not, um, they feel like they have a chance of winning, you know? It's mm. simple as that. So that shows me that there's there's confidence in their camp. They've obviously watched Trinidad. So the fact he's coming out and saying that and watched Trinidad means that he's not particularly scared. So that says a lot about, about them. I mean, yes, you could come on and, you know, fool the media, but I don't I don't hear that from what, from what I heard from him. So I think, as I say, Highland, um, our keeper will be key and um, it'll be interesting to see, as I say, if um, Justin Hodge and Aubrey David make it because if they don't, obviously that's two big changes along the back line and remember, you know, when you, you, you get a result, especially like the last game, although we didn't get a shot out, it's important that the defensive unit stays together for confidence, continuity going forward, you know, so we may have to change things up, which then that's where, you know, I don't want to say mistakes creep in, but they could potentially creep in. Yep, and uh, you read my mind with Nicholas Frenderup. I, I think he has been uh, a great addition to the setup. I mean, also, you know, uh, I'm a fan of Adrian Fonset as well. And obviously before, there was Jan Michael Williams and so on, Marvin Phillip. But I think uh, he adds that calmness at the back that we were missing for a little while. And not because of uh, the poor quality of play, just we, wasn't play we weren't playing any football for a while. And I think he, you know, for a new guy who has never played with Trinidad Tobago much, he looks completely at home. Uh, he's very commanding. Uh, I, I notice he's very vocal. And uh, I, I think that gives the defense a sense of stability that they probably did not have before. I, I still think our Achilles heel is our defense. Um, when we're focused, we're great. But we, we tend to have those latches and concentration which can hurt us. And, uh, you know, Molino, I mean, even though uh, uh, Levi and Jovin isn't there, I think Molino adds that little bit of an X factor where, you know, people are aware of him and and they have that presence, okay, Kevin Kevin is here and they will probably put some attention on him, which frees up the other players, I think, to play with a little more, a uh, bit more uh, uh, relaxed, I guess, because um, even in the, the previous games with Terry, um, we were very strong on the wide areas. Um, Mocket was, was good, but Rocket is still young. But I think Mocket could benefit from these games uh, from, you know, just see, you know, stepping in for Molino rather than being a go-to guy. So he could gradually grow into the national team rather than just being thrown in. But, you know, that's that's just my opinion. But uh, 
I, I, I just touching on something you said there about uh, obviously Nicholas Friend. Mm. The only concern I have with it is he's so good with his feet that does it put additional pressure on our defence? Meaning that you know because he wants to play, keep the ball, he can you know, he can knock the ball out. I don't know if our defenders are as comfortable as he is. So there was times in the game, for example, especially against Munster, I saw him. He was obviously coming out of his goal area to try and get the ball. They may or may not then pass it back. And because of those things, it could put pressure on the team too because, you know, he may want to play the ball out. And as I say, it's no it's no secret that over the years we've not had defenders that are necessarily ball-playing centre-backs. You know, they tend to be very good in the air, you know, good technically and you know, physically, sorry, but not necessarily with the ball. So that's always a worry that I have, especially when we try to knock it at the back, you know? Mm-hmm. And you know, this is a question, we spoke about it in our reaction with, uh, with yourself and the other Andre about, you know, obviously the inevitable comparisons between Angus Eve and Terry Fennick. And, uh, you know, I think I mentioned, I think one of the commentators mentioned that this is a team that scored, you know, at that point in time, before we scored more goals, they said, you know, eight goals in just, you know, three or four games. And, you know, it was pretty good by somebody from the outside looking in. Uh, you know, a lot of people are saying this is a new renaissance in football. Uh, what do you think about that? I think they may be getting a bit carried away at the moment because there's a lot of work to be done. I will mm-hmm. say that. And as I say, I'm not being disrespectful saying that. I think um, it's a new era in a sense because obviously it's a new coach. And then, as we say, it's no lie that the normalisation committee have come in and said that in September they're the most likely going to appoint somebody else. I mean, unless they give the job to Angus, obviously. But they've obviously they put it out there for potential people to apply. So, I mean, it is a new era. It is, as I say, Angus is now as I say, and putting his stamp on the team, but he's not had a long time to do it. So I would say we have to be a bit, we have to be optimistic, yes, but we have to be cautious of our uh, expectations on the team. Because as, as mentioned, if we do well, if we do qualify, or let's say if we want to be confident when we qualify after tomorrow, um, it's not easy games we have in that group because let's be honest, we know the the, press, the pressure, the, press, the pressing, the, the football that Mexico is going to bring. We know El Salvador is going to bring a lot of pace and a lot of, you know, speed and they're going to press us in as well. And then Curacao are a very well coached side. They have a lot of Dutch people, Dutch players. So it's definitely not going to be a walk in the park. It's going to be backs against the wall and, you know, try to pick up some of the results, you know. So it is, it's going to be difficult. And I think this is where the character of the squad has to come in. You know, we have to look to the big characters in the squad to pull the team through now. Yes, and, you know, perspective is an interesting thing and I'll tell you why. Um, I was speaking to some of my American journalists and a couple others and it's interesting how they see it and it's good to hear international or people from outside Fernando Tobago's perspective. You know, a lot of guys, he asked me, he's like, you know, dude, of course, American. He was like, (laughs) he was like, um, I listen and read to some of the Trinidadian press and they're saying that Trinidad Tobago football is in an awful state. But when I looked outside the Bahamas game, you know, they got a 3-0 over Guyana. Uh, that last game against St. Kitts was really good. So, you know, from an outsider looking in, you know, yes, they didn't qualify. But, you know, the results were coming along. And to me, they said they were not surprised that this team, as a result of the previous games, you know, performed as they did. You know, the spine and the foundation was already there. One second. Okay, right, yeah. It was already there. So, you know, that, that comparison is very interesting. This, this doesn't really require an answer, but it just shows how... Sometimes it's good to have a different perspective because, you know, the narrative is sometimes written and, you know, people interpret certain things differently. So some people think we're in good shape, but we'll see. So, so you know, James, just to end things off, I mean, I think we're both reasonably confident that Trinanda Bigo is going to win this game. Um, I'm not going to ask you a scoreline, but, um, you know, is there any additional things you'd like to add? Well, as I say, I mean, I'm not a betting man, but I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put a bet on it either way because, as I say, I just we just don't know enough too much about French Guyana because, and that's the one thing I would tell the fans: just be a little bit cautious because, you know, come tomorrow evening we could be sitting here and saying, Ooh, "What just happened?" You know. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, as I say, I doubt that very much. But there's there's that slight, you know, percent in my brain that's saying that, you know. And the other thing is. Um, Yes, we want to see the team playing nice football, but sometimes we have to grind out results. And it could be one of those evenings as well. And especially going into the Gold Cup. We don't expect to go, to go to the Gold Cup and um, be able to play, you know, beautiful, beautiful football. Because again, as we said, we're in a building phase. 
to be, they call it a renaissance, but it's, it's a building phrase, let's be honest. Um, so we have to, you know, to build a house, you have to put the foundations first. So we don't have the foundations at the moment. That's That was all broken down, you know, so we have to be a little cautious, but I mean, we want to cheer on the team. We want to, you know, wish them the best and let's hope we can get a good result here and get some good results in the Gold Cup too. Yes, yes. And um, what I'll try to do tomorrow for the game is, uh, you know, probably do a watch along and see if that works and then we'll do our post-match. We'll probably have Andre rejoin us as well and have our thoughts and discussions about the game. Hopefully it's a positive result, but as James said, um, you know, you have to be very cautious with these games. If it's one thing that football has taught us and also, you know, our history, Fernand Tobago has a tendency to get a little carried away with things. So, you know, get ahead of themselves. So let's hope that the focus is there. You know, as always, you know, everybody knows James and I are in full support of Toronto because we want our team to win. But we have to be mindful and sometimes just calm things down a bit. And then we celebrate after the victory, not before. So folks, uh, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, let us know what you think about the game. Who do you think is going to win? What do you think about the formations? Who's Angus Eve going to play? What do you think about Angus Eve's first game? And uh, just let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. So James, as always, it's a pleasure. And folks, let's chat after the game. Just a reminder, everyone, for more episodes with Shaka Hislop, be sure to head over to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more updates, interviews and content.